guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Thank you for joining. By the way, if you guys haven't done so already, the best way that you can support this show is by doing one of two things, or hopefully two of two things. One, sharing it with your community. So simply giving this episode a, a retweet or a share on social media. I love it when you post something about what you've learned because that inspires conversation and that creates new episodes. But also leaving me a rating and or a review on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to this on. Today, I've got a little bit of a rant, so uh, I appreciate you guys taking the chance to, to listen to me, right? It's probably going to be educational as well, but this platform is, is not just a place for me to provide you with awesome trading tips and, and, and educational um, elements that will help push you towards becoming a consistently profitable trader, but this is also kind of like a release for me, right? Um, we talk about this a lot when we talk about trading psychology. You need to really uh, control your trade state or control your, your, your mind state. And that means like if you're feeling over emotional, whether, you know, extra excited or extra, you know, depressed, whatever, you need to be in control of that at all times. And something that I typically do is physical fitness, right? Whether I'm having a good day or a a frustrating day, I do some boxing, I do some running, I do some lifting, working out because it kind of gets me away and it's like a way for me to hit my reset button. Something else I do is I journal, and one of the biggest ways that I journal right now is through the Trading Coach Podcast, where I click the on button and I just spew nonsense out my mouth. But the last, uh, I was having this conversation on social media, and you know, um, I, I, I want to put it like this: I'm really big on creating a positive environment. Um, I'm I, I'm very deliberate with who I surround myself with who I talk to, who I ignore, and how I handle myself. And I would say 90% of the interactions that I have on social media, whether it's in different groups or just you know talking to many of you guys that reach out to me on, uh, on Instagram or Twitter, by the way, do so. Don't bite at Akil Stokes RTM. I, I will respond. Um, 90% of the time, it's a great conversation. But there are that 10% of the time where it gets me really, really fired up and it, and it just, it's, it has me losing faith. Not that I had much faith in humanity to begin with, but um, I've been trying to be more optimistic. It, it, it's I, I lose faith in just people being good. And I'll share with you a little bit of the conversation I just had, but the final message was this. I have been trading for 30 years. When I started trading, it was not toxic like it is now. And I would agree, right? The trading trading community or trading in general was a very toxic industry. Now, I think it's gotten better, at least in, in Forex. Maybe that's because people have flocked over to cryptos or, or binaries before that. But when I first got into trading, it was kind of Forex was the new thing. And, and it was just scammers everywhere you go, right? Nine out of 10 things that you see online is someone trying to scam you and then you can make money quick and buy this super secret system. Now, maybe it's a combination that that has happened less. I like to think that what we've done here at Tier 1 Trading has had an impact of uh, you know spreading the reality of trading. Um, or it could just be that I've chosen to ignore all that stuff because I, I don't care. It's probably a combination of both. But what's still toxic is people like this person that I'm talking to. And, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I started the day, as I do every day, by finding a motivational and inspirational quote. That's a thing that I use to kind of fire me up, psych me up, get me in the the right mindset for the day. If uh, you're looking for a very easy routine to do, try it, right? Uh, I forgot who I I, I read this from, but um, I've always heard, I read that your day will follow how it starts, right? So if you start your day off on a good note, right? firing those positives, maybe some meditation, some relaxation, going over your goals, the rest of the day will follow. I I typically do it at night. I try to write my to-do list and my goals for the next day at night. It's the the last thing I think about to end the day. And it's the first thing I look at at the beginning of the day. And it kind of just sets me up to to get rolling before the the coffee wears out like 12 o'clock and I, I have that midday crash. So I start my, my day off by firing off a, a quote because it makes me think, it, it, it fires me up, it punts me up, it gets me going. Um, it's basically my, my coach. Instead of yelling at me in the locker room, I'm, I'm reading it. And today's quote was from a, a good friend of ours at a, a Tier 1 Trading, Dr. Brett Steenbarger. Now, if you haven't done so already, this is, in my opinion, the best 
trading psychologist out there. Um, he's written, <clears throat> excuse me, numerous books. Just to say some off the top of my head, there is um, Must Reads. There is The Daily Trading Coach. Um, there is Trading Psychology 1.0 and 2.0. I feel like I'm missing one as well. Let me just look through through my thing. There, there's a bunch of them, but those are, those are three that I think are must reads. Um, but anything, it, it, what he says is genius. And I shared a quote from him this morning where it says this, quote, the idiot trader has no sense of the process. It's all seat of the pants, right? So that means like the idiot trader, maybe idiot's a harsh term, but um, the idiot trader is someone that is in that unconscious, incompetent stage. And that is the first stage of trading that we all go through. It's it's like a newborn, a baby, right? Babies are new to the world. They're, you know, everything is brand new. They don't know wrong from right. They don't know that, hey, that hot stove, I shouldn't touch that. They just see, ooh, it's red. And they reach their hand out and they touch it. They just don't know what they don't know until they learn. So everything is a brand new learning experience. And that's how we all come into trading, Right. Think about what you know now in trading and think about what you thought you knew when you first got in. You know, I didn't know what a candlestick was. Now this is all I, I work with. So it's just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And the idiot traders, again, I'm, I'm just quoting here. I don't think they're actually idiots. Well, some of them are, but a lot of people aren't idiots. We're just newbies. Um, we have no sense of the process because we don't know there's supposed to be a process. We think trading is like a um, glorified gambling where we come in and we hear something on the news or we read something, or we buy here and, and sell there. And we don't have the idea of that trading is like a business and, and just how McDonald's has a set process for how they cook each hamburger. Um, we have a set process for how we evaluate the markets, how we take each trade and how we manage each trade. Um, after that, it says the idiot trader has no sense of process. It's all seat of the pants, just kind of doing whatever you want. The enlightened idiot trader, uh, so this is, uh, I guess, uh, the step above, I suppose, talks of following the process, but can't produce a flow chart of what they do and why. For the enlightened idiot, process is merely a code word for some general routines. And where I don't think the idiot trader is really an idiot, I think they're a newbie, it's a baby, right? You wouldn't call a baby dumb, they're just uninformed. The enlightened idiot trader, that is a real thing because that is people, um, those are your frauds. Those are your people that talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. And I'm, I'm sure you have friends like that or people you know in other aspects of life, right? That guy that walks around like, yeah, life is great. I got all this money, dumb, doing all this stuff. And then at home, they're just like miserable. They're in a one bedroom apartment. They're eating like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for dinner. But their Instagram, right? Their Instagram is amazing, right? They're everywhere in the world. Um, there are people that they say the right things. They, they have the right talk. They sound like they know what they're doing. But underneath that, that exterior, there's really, there's no substance there. there. There's nothing there. And I think to a point, all of us get to that stage as, as well. I guess that would be called the, um, that would be called the conscious, conscious incompetence stage, right? So unconscious incompetence means we don't know what we don't know. Conscious incompetence means that we're well aware that we don't know something. And from that stage, either two things happen, either you... And this is the this is the main stage that traders get stuck at, by the way. But from that stage, either one of two things happen, right? We understand like, man, like I, something is missing. I don't know what it is. And we take strides to try and fix that and put ourselves in the next stage, the final and fourth stage of trading. Um, or we lie about it, right? We try to pretend like, oh, yeah, we know what we're doing, but we re because we read and hear stuff, but we really don't. And I went through this stage as well. Right. This is a stage that many of the traders that we do assessments with go through. And I, I went through this stage as well. Right. When I first got assessed from what would be my trading mentor, I got a phone call. Right. And he said, hey, Kale, blah, blah. You know, glad you filled out the trader assessment online. Um, walk me through your trading plan. How do you trade? And, and you know, I started saying stuff and he's, he's taking it in. Yep. Yep. You know, wait for the breakout. OK, wait for the breakout. So what's what's that mean? What's a breakout? Oh, you know. Breakout is when market, you know, breaks out, right? You always know it's bad when you try to explain something using the definition. Yeah, breakout is when it breaks out. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Well, you know, what do you what do you need to see to, to, to have a breakout? When the candle needs to be above the line, you know, the, the trend line. He's okay. Um, how far does it need to be above by? Uh, you know, it needs a, you know, good amount. He's okay. What, what's a good amount, right? Uh, you, 
it, and I'm, you know, at this point, you can tell I didn't have any rules for it, but I'm trying to say the right thing. You know, a good amount, like a, a cl clear break, a clear break. OK, a break and close below or just like a break? Uh, um, uh, yeah, it depends on the situation. Right. And we did this dance for a while until we eventually got to the point where I had to admit that I didn't have clear rules. You know, I, I had a, a kind of a general process. I kind of knew what I was looking for, but there were no clear rules on how to execute it. So from that stage, right again, I had two choices. I tried to fight it. I tried to fake it for a while until it got to the point where I was getting punched so many times by these comebacks and, and got basically tired of BSing them that I finally admitted. I'm like, man, I, I guess I, I guess I don't. Uh, and that was an eye-opening experience for me because, I, again, I never knew about a process to trading. I never knew about rules-based trading. It seems weird now because trading is so mechanical now. If then, if then, if then. It's like literally a, a robot executing you know, binary code or something like that. Um, but back then, I had, no, I, I had no idea. I was just kind of doing what I thought I was doing. Um, and this was the moment, this was the game-changing moment in my career that made me realize that... Um, there is a process in trading. You should treat it like a business. And really, I look at that as being the turning point in my life. And I mean that. For you guys that are new to the podcast, maybe you haven't listened to all 300 or whatever episodes you're up to now. Um, I started trading at a young age, right out of college. And, and I, I kind of put everything on. I won't say I put everything on hold because I didn't really have much going for me at the time. I was working working three jobs. I didn't have a career or family. But I, I dedicated myself to learning how to trade and I, I failed miserably for a very long time. And, and then I took the right steps. I took the right action. I still failed miserably, miserably for a time after that. But eventually I made it. And the majority of my post-college life has been spent trading. I've been fortunate enough where I, I've never had a real job. Um, and that's kind of cool to say. And this was the, the, the turning point in that. Don't get me wrong. It was hell at the time. But looking back, you know, almost 15 years now in the past, um, that was the turning point in my career. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful every day for the people that I met on the journey. And I know we're not supposed and you know, my my mentors, Jason Stapleton and, and Todd Brown, they'll always tell me we're not responsible for your success. And I'm the same way. Right. They don't they didn't make me successful. I made myself successful. But if I didn't have their guidance, it wouldn't have happened. Um so I look at them as being key figures in my life and that being a key time in my life. And because of that, because they were because I was able to basically take myself from being a lost soul struggling and losing money and, 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 and dreading going to work every day and cleaning toilets and, you know, just hating life for me to go to that, to having, quote unquote, the perfect life, you know, where I can literally do whatever I want. I don't say that in a in a, a braggadocious way to make you feel bad. I, I say it in a way to kind of empower you to say that, hey, like I if, if this dude can do it, <laughs> me, anyone can do it to, to make that jump. It's it's truly a blessing. And because of that, I've always I've always went with the approach where it's like, hey, I, I was fortunate enough to make it up the top of the hill. My job is to pay it forward. My job is to help anyone else that has that same dream, that same desire that say like, hey, your story reminds me of, of me and, and, and give them not only motivation that they can do it too, but actually work with them hands on uh, through the process. And it's, it's been a very valuable part of my life. Um, it is, you know, an industry that has a lot of um, what's the word selfishness where it's kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, a dog eat dog industry. You always hear, it's not really like this, but you always hear there has to be a loser for every winner. I get, that's true in a sense, but the market's so big that you don't actually see the other loser. Um, it, it's, it's kind of giving me value in, in, in what I do. I'm not just making money in the market. It's not like when I was managing money, I'm just making rich people richer. Um, I'm actually helping people change their lives and, and, and hopefully I'm all about legacy. Um, you know, you think about this type of stuff, especially when you hear like Kobe Bryant passing, hopefully when it's my time to go, whether that be tomorrow, whether that may be 50 years from now, um, hopefully when people look at me, they, they look back as someone who was helpful and, and made a difference. And, and hopefully because I made a difference in your life, you're more encouraged to make a difference in someone else's life. And, and, and that's how we make the world a better place. We just keep bringing each other up. And I bring up all that soft that softness, right? Uh, getting all emotional and whatnot. I bring up that softness because, you know, the, the conversation I had today really offended me. Um, 
I, I, I posted that quote in a, in a trading group I'm part of, and I got the response, and, and, and some guy was like, that's because people don't know the rules and blah, 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 like that, and, and that's true. And I kind of went through what I just shared with you guys now, where it's like, yeah, people don't know the rules, but the guy said it in a way that was negative. Traders are stupid. They don't know the rules, blah, blah. Um, you know, nobody should help them. And it's like, don't get me wrong. Some traders are idiots. There are people that will continue to fake it and never accept, you know, what they need to do. But there's a whole flock of traders out there. And I bet many of you listen to the podcast fall into this category. There's a whole bunch of you out there that just don't know. Right. You didn't know something until you listened to this podcast. And I said it for the first time. You didn't know something until you ran across a, a trading video from someone and, and you learned something new. So you don't necessarily know that you're doing something wrong and still until someone tells you, especially if you don't have coaching and teaching. Who's going to tell you? Right. The Internet, Internet's not going to tell you. Um, and you have to give those people a chance. And. You know, he, uh, I said, you know, exactly one of my things is when it comes to playing, I said, if a trader takes more than six seconds to explain something, then there's a good chance they don't actually have a rule for it in their trading plan. And then he says, then they're not a trader, period. And I said, well, yeah, they're not a trader yet. Um, but if they decide to make the necessary changes, they could be, right? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, the guy is right. They're not traders, but I'm, I don't want to make it an ultimate like, hey, you're, you're done forever. And then the response is, and this is where it started getting to me. He says, well, why waste your time with bus drivers and carpenters? And essentially what that means is like, you know, we find out later, this guy seems to kind of be on his high horse or, or whatnot. Um, and, you know, the, the, the profile pic has like this, you know, he's next to a car and, you know, you know typical stuff. Um, but what I got from that is like, are you saying that like, just because, you know, just because we're not formally educated, just because we didn't go to Harvard or Yale or Oxford or anything like that, um, we can't be traders. You saying that people love, and, and I'm not saying this is true, but like, I, I, I would guess people perceive like fortune 500 CEOs of having a higher IQ than carpenters and bus drivers. I think people look at those as really kind of blue collar jobs where you don't have to be smart, even though it, you can be a genius and be a carpenter. You can be a genius and be a bus driver. You just want, that's just something you want to do, um, whether it's on the side or full time. The point is why waste your time with them? Well, because they have every opportunity to change their life just like anyone else. Like, why not? If a bus driver wants to, matter of fact, one of my best friends, he's not a bus driver, but he, he, he's a, he, he works for, uh, he's, he's a mechanic. Um, and, and he just got involved with tier one and he's just saying, Hey, like he, he loves what he does. He loves what he does. He loves his job, loves his job, but he's looking for something else. He's looking to create more time. And, and you're saying it's a waste of time to try and teach someone with a dream how to do something that's beneficial for their life? Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. That, that just doesn't make sense to me. And I went on this whole spiel about what I just told you guys about unconscious incompetence. He said, in general, and he said, I, I said, in general in life, we should, be, we should be willing to reach a hand to assist someone, um, to basically help someone out. Now, it's important. That person has to be willing to take your help, Right? It's your job to reach that hand out and say, hey, here's the path. Let me show you or let me and, and, and let me put this knowledge on you. It's their choice whether they want to take it. And that's going to be the difference maker. If they say, oh, no, I'm fine doing it my way, then poof, let them go. But if they want to be helped, allow them to be helped. I think it's our duty to, to better each other by doing that. Um, and then the last again, the last statement, which I kind of read for you earlier, he said, I've been trading for 30 years. When I started trading, it was talk. It wasn't not toxic like it is now. The industry, I put, the industry has put in lots of marketing uh, to sell crap, retail strategies, oscillators, which the pros don't use. It's so toxic. Even carpenters think they can leave the workshop and make money in the city. And again, I, I just maybe I'm interpreting this wrong. I see that as someone that's on their high horse saying it takes a certain type of person to be a trader. And it, it does. It takes a certain you need a, a certain type of personality and drive and desire but it's it's certainly not anything to do with iq it's more work ethic and i would i would argue this um just from being someone that grew up where my best friend's grandfather was a carpenter we would we would build houses right and we'd spend weekends right just grinding it out i would say that people that do those blue collar jobs those those quote unquote dirty jobs that no one else wants to do i bet they have a higher work ethic than most of the people on Wall Street or most of the people in white collar jobs sitting in a cubicle. 
And again, it's, it's going to be on a person by person basis. But I don't think it's fair to say that just because someone is a, a carpenter or a bus driver that they don't deserve to better their lives or, or learn a skill that can better their kids' lives or, or learn how to be in control of, of their money and, 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 and be financially responsible. I think that's stupid. I think that's the, one of the main problems that we have with the world now is this stupid divide where people up here think they're better than people down here just because of these certain labels. Um, and it's, it's, it's no one wants to help each other out. So that's my rant, man. Like it, it just it pisses me off because I see myself as that carpenter. I see myself as that bus driver, and I see myself as someone that would probably not be. Do- I don't know what I would be doing, honestly. Um, but I'm doing what I'm doing now because someone was willing to help me. And you and and I know some of you guys are saying, well, okay, well, it's a you know, you know, you paid for coaching at Keel. And yeah, I, I did pay for coaching, right? So it's a business. But guess what? The people that coached me, they didn't have to be coaches. Trust me. When I started coaching, I learned a lot about the behind the scenes work and I did money management on my own. There's a lot more money in managing accounts. I'm talking people willingly ready to throw millions of dollars at you to manage. And you can go ahead and calculate the percentages on that. But you don't get the same value. And that's why my mentor wanted to coach because he saw value in helping people. Yes, there's a business aspect. You should be paid for your services. 100% agree in that, right? I charge for my services. Why? Because I do a damn good job. And I invest a lot of time, energy, and effort into it, right? I'm not going to do that if I'm not getting paid. This ain't a charity, all right? But there's value in what I do. And that's why I've made the decision to coach instead of continue with money management. Because the bigger picture is you can help people change their lives. And you can argue that the people that you're helping to change their lives, those are the people that need it most, and I think if, if we don't have that kind of mindset as just as a whole, as, as human beings, as a society, and then this divide that we're having is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And eventually it's going to get worse. Mm-hmm.